right guys, so let's look at the next reaction here. So we're gonna talk about hydration of alkynes. Well, we've seen hydration of alkenes before and some of those reagents will be used also for hydrating alkynes. We'll see that there's a little permutations to how we use them, but they're basically still gonna be mercury and boron. All right, so um, the first step of this reaction, we have an alkyne reacting with mercury sulfate, sulfuric acid, water. And this gives us an alcohol, that's an alcohol, and that's an alkene. And together that is called an enol. Vinyl, because we're next to a double bond. And this is not a second step. This is something that takes place within the reaction because the mixture of these two things together, right, makes H3O plus. So in its presence, this enol goes um, in, through a transformation to become a keto form. And that's a reaction that we see in the second little bullet down here called tautomerization, uh, or sometimes known as tautomerism. So let's take a look at the mechanism here. Let's see. Zoom in a little. All right. So let's start off with a terminal alkyne. So all right, so let's start off with a terminal alkyne. So we're gonna have an R C one two three CH. And to this we're going to add that combination of right HG SO4. H2SO4 and water. Um, the result of all that means that we have Hg2 plus and H3O plus. So these guys are what we're going to use for our reactants here. Well, the first step of this thing is that we're going to take a carbon carbon triple bond, one of those pi bonds, and we're going to make a bond here to mercury. So the question is, which one of these two carbon atoms are we gonna to go to? Well, we wanna put the mercury at a position that generates the most stable carbocation. So if we put the mercury here, then you'd have a plus charge here, right? And because you're substituted here with an R group, that's the more stable position. Okay, now the second step of this reaction has water coming in. And the next step kind of is reminiscent of an SN1 reaction. So we're gonna come around, grab a hold of that carbon. All right, that'll give us our R group, double bond, HG plus, H, OH plus. And then we need to get rid of that proton. So we're going to use water to do this. So let's pull this thing over a little bit more. Let's continue that reaction. So we're going to move over here. And we're going to use water to grab one of those H's. And then we do this, right? So get that arrow looking better. Um, so what we're left with here is our same two carbons, double bonded, now with an OH, an HG+, plus, and an H atom down here. Okay. Okay, and what we form here is, is this kind of intermediate. So it looks kind of like an enol because you've got your OH group here, right? That's your all, and you've got your double bond here, that's your ene. Only problem is we got to get rid of this guy. So we're going to do that the following way. We're going to take this and we're going to add um, H3O plus. This is going to come over and grab one of those protons. 
just like that. Then we will have formed this. So the question is, where does that proton go? Well, if we put it right here, we get a plus charge right there. <coughs> right, now that's a good place because this is next to an R group, that plus charge. And we're adjacent to a lone pair bearing atom, so we have resonance. So let's draw the resonance structure of that guy. Let's see, we got mercury, H and H. So put all those things in there and there's your resonance. Now we're one step away from kind of the next intermediate and then we'll see this ketoenol tautomerism down below. Last step here, I have water present in solution. All right, got H3O plus still here what happens is this this mercury here just kind of plops off so it comes down and we form a double bond here and then we pull up those electrons up to our oxygen again so what you get there is your double bond your two H's and then your OH right there right now that is your true Enol. Okay. So remember that um, we mentioned up above that the enols are typically unstable. Um, there's a few exceptions to that rule, um, but typically they want to become the keto form. So because that enol is in the presence of water and H3O plus, we see a reaction called acid catalyzed ketoenol tautomerization, sometimes just called tautomerism. So let's copy that structure down below right here. It's a pretty straightforward reaction, but let's look at it. So you got your carbon-carbon double bond there. You got your OH, and you got your two H's here. This is a reversible reaction here. So you got your Uh, H3O plus present. So first step, we're going to grab a proton. The proton's going to go to the same place where that mercury was. So we're going to get RCOH plus and then one, two, three H is here. And again, we want that because we're more substituted. And we're also adjacent to a lone pair bearing atom, so just like before, we have resonance. All right, so if we put in our next structure here, I'm going to just now write that as a CH3. We get this guy, and we're almost at our enol. We just need to get rid of that proton. Now notice it says it's catalyzed, right? So here we just used an H3O plus. Now we need to regenerate it. So this is the regeneration step. So there's your H3O plus, not usually included as a product, but done so here for clear clarity. Um, and then we got our CH3 here. So again, to point out, this is the enol form, and then this is, over here, the keto form. 